Hey everybody, welcome back to my kitchen or welcome if you are new. My name is Bethany or Budget Bethany and it has been so very long since I had a new what's for dinner for y'all and I'm so very sorry about that. I'm going to try to do better. Hopefully it won't be as long as it has been this time before I post a new one but nonetheless I have a new what's for dinner for y'all for this week and I will be sharing six super easy weeknight dinners with y'all as well as a super easy dessert. I hope you all are doing well and let's get into this week's what's for dinner. Now all my dreams are coming true. I just wanna put my heels on tight Dance with you all night Move to my favorite song so we're going to be kicking off this week's what's for dinner with some good old homemade chicken tenders and i'm just going to season them up with this cajun two-step if you have tiktok i'm sure you've seen him by now but i purchased the seasoning at walmart and if i can find the link i'll link that down below in my description box so for my tenders i just bought a package of chicken breasts cut them into strips soaked them in a bag of buttermilk and then also that cajun two-step seasoning once i was ready to fry them up i just took them out of the buttermilk and put them in a bowl with flour made sure they got good and coated and then i dropped them in my hot grease and let them fry for about 10 minutes and then this was my plate once it was done i just made a box of macaroni and opened up a can of green beans i also like to dip my chicken tenders in that hot wing sauce so i also got that at walmart but this was our dinner for this night moving into the next dinner we had some steak tacos and it was probably taco tuesday so right here i just have a package of the thin carne asada steak and it's cut really thin and then i have a package of the um kinders like carne asada um mexican seasoning it has like a touch of lime flavor into it it's really good i highly recommend it and if i can find the link i'll link it down below because i got that at walmart as well then you also need a bell pepper and an onion and i've got some of this salsa con queso just for like dipping and some of this chunky guacamole that you can find already made made up at walmart some tortillas and some tortilla chips and some limes so in my pan i just um put some olive oil in the bottom of that and got that heated up and then i dumped my steak in there i squeezed in about a, a whole lime maybe a whole lime and a half and then i just seasoned it with that um kinder's um, mexican seasoning i could think of what it's called but anyway i just cooked that down until my steak is good and cooked thoroughly once my steak was done i did remove it from the pan and i throwed my bell pepper and my onions in that same pan because we're not about messing up a whole bunch of dishes over here especially after you've worked all day you're just ready to get stuff on the table and ready to go to bed pretty much but anyway after i got my peppers and my onions cooked I, it was time to assemble my tacos i guess it's not really tacos it's more like steak fajitas i guess you would say but anyway y'all get the gist of what this dinner is all about i just heated up my tortillas in the microwave and then i added my steak my onion and my bell pepper and i had a lime on the side and i got my tortillas chips and my guacamole so moving into the next night we're going to have some shake and bake pork chops some like rice rice and some steamed broccoli all right so for my pork chops i just have a mccormick pork chops shake and bake seasoning package as well as a pack of pork chops and i don't really make my mind the directions on the mccormick package seasoning package i just kind of take my pork chops put those in a bag and then i dump in that seasoning and shake them up really well i coat my baking pan with some olive oil and then i put my pork chops on there and put that in the oven on 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes it just depends on how thick your pork chops are but that's all i do for my shake and bake pork chops and then for my broccoli i just added some olive oil into the bottom of this pan and then i put my broccoli on there put on a little bit of seasoning some salt some garlic powder and some onion powder and pop that in the oven as well easy peasy everybody loves roasted broccoli and then for my rice i just follow the directions on the rice package and then here was my pork chops once they were done it does look a little icky on the pan but i promise y'all it's really good and then here it was once it was all plated up and of course i had it served up on some paper plates because y'all like i said we're not about the dishwashing live over here all right so carrying right along everybody loves some breakfast for dinner sometimes so on this night we're going to have breakfast for dinner and we're going to have some sausage gravy biscuits so for my sausage gravy i'm just browning up one pound of ground sausage and then once i got that all browned i do not drain my grease i leave my grease in there and then i just add about a um probably about a half a cup of flour you just want to get that thickened up really good and once it's all thick and clumpy i'm going to add in about a cup of whole milk i'm just going to kind of get that stirred up in there and kind of let that simmer for a little while probably about 20 minutes until it gets thickened up and this is how your gravy will look once it's done i do add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper as well And then if you have a lot more time than what I have and you're like the most amazing person in the whole wide world, you could of course make your biscuits homemade, but I'm not that amazing and I'm just going to use some frozen biscuits. So I'm just popping those in the oven by the directions of the biscuit packet. 
Of course, you could pair your sausage gravy biscuits with some fresh fruit or some tater tots, you know, whatever your little heart desires, but we just had some plain old sausage gravy biscuits. Moving into the next dinner for this week, we're going to have some meatball subs, and this was like my absolute favorite dinner from this week. It was really good, and it was super easy and convenient for me to make, so all I had to do was break out my trusty old crock pot, dump in some of the frozen meatballs that you can find in the frozen section at Walmart. I'll link those as well, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows about these good old meatballs by now. So I just dumped those in the crock pot and added the rest of this ragu spaghetti sauce that I had that I needed to get used up anyway and of course I always add water to mine to make sure that I get every little drop out. <laughs> so once I got everything added into my crock pot I'm going to season it up a little bit I'm going to add some garlic powder some onion powder and some little of those little parsley flakes. I'm going to make sure that all my meatballs get good and coated so I'm going to stir it up really well and then I'm going to pop the lid on it and I'm going to cook it on low for about five to six hours or in my case the whole time I'm at work so supper will be ready when I come home and well funny story once I come home I was in a rush to get supper on the table and I forgot to show y'all what the meatballs looked like but there was a few left in there and then I'm just going to plate these up on our wonder white sub rolls and I add a little bit of mozzarella cheese to the top and let that get good and melted and that was dinner for that night you could also add a side salad to that you know whatever your little heart desires but that's what we had and then moving right along into the next night we're going to be making some fried ribs and if you've never had fried ribs do not knock it until you try it so i've just got a package of ribs right here and they're pre-seasoned and everything and you do not have to flour ribs whenever you're um frying them you just add them into your hot grease and this is how they look once they're fried and then this is how they look once they're done and i do fry them for about 20 25 minutes or maybe 30 minutes it just depends on how thick your ribs are and then to go with our fried ribs we're going to have some roasted asparagus so i've just got that on my baking sheet with some olive oil some garlic powder some onion powder and then i pop that in the oven on 350 for about 20 minutes and then i also made some noodles and tomatoes and i've shared that many times over here on my channel but i'll have that link down below if you're interested in that recipe But anyways, here was our plate once it was all plated up. And you could also possibly add some barbecue sauce to your fried ribs. I think that would be really good. But nonetheless, here was our plate once it was all plated up. Moving into a super easy southern dessert that my nanny used to make all the time. Peach cobbler. All right, so to start with, you're just going to place a stick of butter into your baking pan. You're going to pop this in the oven, and you got your oven preheated to 350. You're just going to let that butter melt in there, and while that butter is melting, you're going to mix together a cup of flour. You want self-rising flour and a cup of milk. I got whole milk and a cup of sugar, as well as a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. You could also add a teaspoon of vanilla extract or like the real vanilla, whichever one you prefer. But once your um, butter is all melted, you will remove your baking pan and add your peaches in there so you will need a can of like the family size peaches or either a or two cans of like the regular size peaches so once you get your peaches added into your baking pan you're just going to pour that mixture the cup of flour cup of sugar cup of milk mixture over on top of your peaches and then you're going to put this back in the oven which i said was preheated to 350 degrees and you're going to let this bake for about 20 25 minutes or until your dough is formed then here she is once she's fresh out of the oven we like to serve ours with some vanilla ice cream but you could just eat it directly right on out this dish if you wanted to but y'all that's it for this week's what's for dinner i hope that you all enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up as always and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already i love each and every one of y'all and thank y'all so much for always supporting me and i will catch you all in the very next video bye y'all